Today, we're taking a look at Michael Jordan's watch collection. Michael Jordan is recognized even by the NBA as the greatest basketball player of all time. He is also the wealthiest right now, valued over $1 billion. How did he become so wealthy? Well, obviously, basketball players make a lot of money. But nowadays, he owns the Charlotte Hornets and also his brand, Jordan under the Nike umbrella, which is one of the most popular shoe brands nowadays. But let's look at his watch collection. The first one is the Rolex GMT Master 2, reference 116758 SANR in 18 karat yellow gold with factory diamonds. Watch like this is worth about $110,000 right now. Next up is the Rolex Daytona, reference 116506 in platinum with a nice blue dial. And this is a watch that halved in price ever since the boom in the luxury watch market. This watch used to trade over $200,000 and now it's worth about $100,000. Rolex Daytona X Bamford Polar Edition. This is the reference 116520 in stainless steel with a white graphite coating. Nowadays, Bamford, who is a company that customizes watches with uh, DLC or PVD coating, as well as white graphite coating, is now owned by LVMH, so it only customizes watches from the LVMH group. And those include Petsek Philippe and also Zenith. But Rolex is not on that list, so you'd be hard pressed to find one of these right now. It's worth about $25,000, not customized, but customized, I don't really know. Probably about the same. Panerai Luminor Marina. This is the Pan 172. Has a tantalum case and it is discontinued. It's worth about $15,000. Rolex Paul Newman Daytona. Jordan is clearly a big fan of the Rolex Daytona. As are many celebrities. This is the reference 6241 in stainless steel. And uh, it was made before 1968. It's worth about $150,000. Panerai Radio Mirror. This is the PAM 425 in stainless steel with a 47 millimeter case. This is a watch that not a lot of people can pull off, but Jordan has massive wrists, so he's able to wear this watch, and it looks like a 40 millimeter watch on him. It's worth about $6,000. Erwork 202. Jordan is a big fan of Erwork. It's the UR202S in stainless steel, and it has hours displayed through cubes in the middle of the watch, and the cubes point to the minutes at the bottom of the dial. It's worth about $80,000. Ulysse Nardin Royal Blue Mystery Tourbillon. This is the reference 799838F in platinum. It's limited to only 30 pieces, and it has factory diamonds from Ulysse Nardin. And Ulysse Nordin is not recognized as the luxury watch brand that makes these super exclusive factory diamond pieces that are worth a lot of money. But this one is one of the most expensive watches in his collection, surprisingly, worth about $270,000. Rolex Guidewaller, it's the reference 326-934 in stainless steel with the oyster bracelet. Uh, they used to only make this watch with oyster bracelets, but now they also make it with a Jubilee band. It's worth about $20,000. Erwork 210 Royal Hawk, not Royal Oak, Royal Hawk. Reference UR210Y in titanium, limited to only 75 pieces. And he was wearing this at the NBA All-Star Game 75th anniversary. So honestly, I don't know if he's sponsored or a brand ambassador for Erwork because I don't see any other celebrities or any other people, period, wearing or even talking about this watch brand. And yet he wore a piece limited to 75 pieces at the 75th anniversary of the NBA All-Star Game. Coincidence? I don't think so. But it's worth about $150,000. Rolex Day Date 36. It's reference 18078 in 18 karat yellow gold. And it's a watch made in the 1980s. It's worth about $20,000. Richard Mill RM32 Diver. This has a flyback chronograph, it's an 18 karat rose gold, and also has an annual calendar function. Richard Mill is not really known for having round watches, uh, which are the conventional uh, shape of watches. 
But yet, this is one of them, and it's worth quite a bit of money, but not as much as the other rectangular watches they have. It's worth about $150,000. Urwork 220. Yes, another Urwork. This is the UR220 in 18 karat rose gold, limited to only 10 pieces. It's worth about 150 grand. Lange Datagraph, reference five, uh, 453.135 in platinum. It even has a platinum Wellendorf bracelet, uh, which is pretty hard to find on a datagraph. It's worth about $100,000. Ulysse Nardin Sonata Cathedral, reference 67888 in stainless steel. It has a mechanical alarm, and the alarm time indicator is located at the 2 o'clock position, as you can see on the picture. And the subdial at 10 o'clock indicates a countdown to when the alarm will chime the next time, which is once every 24 hours. So you can set up an alarm at, let's say, 7 a.m. when you wake up and put your watch right next to your bed. And it will ring every single morning at 7 a.m. to wake you up. And it's all mechanical. So it's about $10,000. Roger Dubuis Excalibur Spider Pirelli. It's the reference RDDBEX0826. It, hit, it is in DLC coated titanium and it has a skeletonized micro rotor automatic movement. You see on the dial in the top left, that's the rotor. It's incredibly small. It's the size of a sub dial, yet that's what powers the watch. That's for maximum skeletonized dial. It's worth about $65,000. By the way, Look at the cigar he's smoking. I bet he didn't smoke big cigars like this when he was playing. Because that 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 can't be healthy. <laughs> IWC Big Pilot Le Petit Prince 46. It's a reference IW501002 in stainless steel. It has a 7-day power reserve. It's also indicated on the dial so you know when to wind your watch or to go for a quick little jog so that the automatic movement powers the watch. It was named after Antoine de Saint-Exupéry's novel uh, titled Le Petit Prince. And uh, it's an aviator watch or a flieger watch, as some people call it. It's worth about $10,000. Rolex Date 40, reference 228239 in 18 karat white gold with a blue dial. It's worth about $50,000. So that's it for Jordan's watch collection. It has a total value of $1.5 million and his net worth is $1.6 billion dollars yes billion b michael jordan's watch collection gets a rating of 7 out of 10 i think when it comes to diversity he's pretty good on that because he has watches that nobody knows like the roger dubuis um the Erwork, and the ulysse nardin watches he's pretty original he's not following the trends but if i had to give him any suggestions I would say a Patek Philippe Nautilus 5976 in white gold, the 40th anniversary version. Why this one over other Nautilus models? It's because he has amaze, not amazing, <laughs> he has huge wrists. He has enormous wrists. And he cannot wear a traditional 5711. It would be too small for him. So he should get this one, which is 44 millimeters. Another 44 millimeter watch that he should, ha should add in his collection is the Armor Piguet Royal Oak ceramic um, uh, ceramic bezel carbon case Royal Oak Offshore. This one is also 44 millimeters, so it will fit him pretty well. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about Michael Jordan's watch collection. Who should I do next? And I will talk to you guys later.